Hello again, this is UML Operator. We need to talk about the Sparks browser window. I think that there are at least three, maybe four windows that you're gonna use the most, right? So one of them is the browser window. The other three are the properties window over here on the right in the default layer, layout, notes window in the lower right in the default layout. And something I show you all the time is the toolbar, which pops up, could pop up anywhere within your Sparks Enterprise Architect installation, but it pops up over on the left for myself. So I'll talk about toolbox throughout other sessions. At this particular point, we want to focus on the browser. So as usual in these sessions, I tell you to go to the start tab. I tell you to go to help. Let's hit this down arrow, open up help, and it will launch the welcome window in Spark Systems website. And from here, you're going to click on the application desktop, and you're going to go down to the browser window, right? And this will open up intelligence, directions, tutorials, everything around the browser window that we're going to talk about in just a second. Again, you can drag and drop the browser window anywhere you want. As I talk about in other learning sessions, you get these drop zones where you can put it at the top, you can put it over on the right where I like it, on the left where it is in default, but let's just have it out in the middle right here so we can talk about it. So in the browser window, top to bottom, left to right. All right, so of course we got the name of the window. We have this first icon, these tools that are across the top, but this first icon launches the uh, wizard, you know, within the start page. You can create particular packages using patterns. And I talk about that in earlier sessions. So the next icon launches a new package within any package that you're currently in. So in this getting started, if we wanted to launch a new package, we would select this icon. It would ask us to name the package. I'm gonna leave package one. You can create just a package. You can create a package with a diagram in it, or you can select and apply model pattern, which basically takes you back over to the wizard. I'm just gonna leave package one as the name and we're just gonna create a package. So you can see what it did was it created a package under the zone where I, the package or namespace that I was in, it created something called package one. And then from here, I can keep creating packages, as many packages as I want down through the various layers. Let's talk about the package hierarchy or namespace. All right, so an object-oriented design, these would be namespaces. In the project browser, most human understandable reference is just calling these packages, just like in Microsoft Explorer file packages. All right, so the first level is called the root node, and you can create root nodes by right-clicking here and select Add Root Node. And we're going to call this root node training, if I spelt that right. So this is a root node that is empty. In this root node, this is considered level one, all right? Then level two, then level three, then level four, and you can go down as far as you need to, all right? So understanding how your packages are, where your packages are in reference to SQL data and namespaces is critical during model-driven architecture and model-driven development. All right, the next icon is diagram. So you can create a new diagram. And it, once you selected whatever package that you're on, you can choose from any type of diagram type. So let's just create a class diagram within something called package one, right? So I'm going to do that now. So the problem with my naming convention is everything is package one. <laughs> so you would you would not do this, right? You would typically put things in the proper naming convention for your effort and what you're doing, or make them human readable. 
just like when you're typing outline in Microsoft Word or any Word program, you know, you've got header one, header two, header three. You have various layers in your outline. When it comes to Sparks, however you lay this out will be represented in your modeling approaches as well as your reporting approaches. All right, so one of the most powerful features within Sparks Enterprise Architect and because the underpinning intelligence source is a database, SQL Lite in this local source, I'm able to move these packages. I'm holding down the left mouse button and I wanna drag and drop it under this package. So now this package, and I'm just gonna call it package two, is now under getting started, right? And I can actually take the original higher level parent package and drag and drop it under package two, right? So very powerful. You can move packages as you're progressing through your efforts, as you're changing your model structures and your conversations, you're able to drag and drop packages, including diagrams. I want to put the diagram I'm holding down the left mouse button. I'm going to let go under getting started. Now this diagram is under this package or namespace. So the browser is a very powerful and useful area that you're going to be using most of the time. The next two tools give you the ability to move things up and down. So you'll notice that package two, I want it above navigation. I select this arrow and there you go. Now it's, I can't go any higher cause you know, there's no other packages to progress into, but I'm able to move packages up and down. Same thing with diagrams. All right. So it's type based. So I'm able to move this diagram to the top and this becomes important when you go to launch packages, it'll launch the first diagram under the package. So if, if you were creating some sort of package reference here and I double click on this package, it takes me to getting started diagram. All right. If I was to move this package diagram, package one diagram up, and I was to select this, it will load package one. Now it can't, I'm in package one diagram. I can't load the diagram that way, but let's just move WebEA up so I can prove my point better. So now let's double click this. So we go into the WebEA diagram. So progressing or moving your diagrams up and down becomes important when you want to use your packages or your namespace as composite links. Now, of course, Sparks gives you the ability to bring in packages as uh, index elements. I can grab a package and drag it in and say, hey, you know, I want to make this a different reference or I can take a diagram. Let's take this diagram, drag and drop it in. I can make it a hyperlink or a navigation cell. Let's make it a navigation cell. Let me just pick the first icon. And now we get the navigation cell that takes me right to the diagram that I need to navigate to. And you can see that in the getting started when you launch this, these are all navigation cells or panels. So the next tool that's over here is find context item. So I don't know, I'm going to drag and drop a package over here going to lose focus. And then I'm going to select an element or a package and it takes me right to it, right? Let's find this it takes me right to the navigation cell. Let's find this it takes me right to it. And if I have uh, an element, let's go in and try to find an element in here. I'm going to go all the way into something. Let's find this element. Let me hit that. It found that element immediately all the way through all of these packages, these namespaces within this very large and complicated project. So the next tool is the hamburger icon. This basically signifies a menu. You can hit the uh, control arrow down 
And it gives you a lot of the features you have in the start page and other areas like find and browser, new element. I'll talk about doc documentation when we get to reporting and uh, other areas, sessions, code generation. I'll talk about that when we get to development and code generation. And then you always have access to the help by, you know, right here in this drop down. Right. So what I want to do is I want to go across these tabs next in the browser. Okay, in these tabs, the first one, of course, is the project browser itself, which is exposing all of these packages that are in your particular project. You may have one or you may have many at many levels, just as in the EA example file. The next one is context. When we select context, it knows that we're on this particular package and the elements and the other the packages under this package, right? So I can select these and drill down into them if I wish. Here, this is a diagram icon. I can go into and open this particular analysis and I can navigate up and down, right? So context is very powerful in navigating through a large efforts where you have lots of different packages and sub packages and so on. The next one's diagram. So I'm in the relationship, the entity relationship diagram. And these are all the elements that are in this diagram, including the hidden elements, all right? So I'm able to select these and look at that. It's literally finding them in the diagram for you. And you can drill down to specific associations. As you're moving through, so I can go to first name, I can go to the association between first name and customer, and go back up to customer. I can look at all of the associations, the connectors from customer to other things. So this is a, a useful tab in the browser to be able to navigate through your complex artifacts. All right, the next sub tab here is resources. When I select this, I go to the resource window where I can get to patterns. I can get to lots of different things that we're gonna talk about as we progress in learning Sparks. Probably the most one that you're going to use is your linked documents you're for reporting so when we get to reporting we'll be talking about that we'll also be going to document publisher the other one that you'll be using the most as we start to progress together is patterns whether it's model patterns but patterns down at the bottom we're going to learn how to create reusable patterns i'll show you how to do that in later sessions all right, let's start to wrap up here. I want to go back to diagram. I want to show you within the tooling that's in each one of these diagram in particular, you get into very large diagrams and you want to drill down into particular elements. And hopefully you followed a naming convention that was useful. You get this search bar out here that allows you to filter and find. All right, so I'm just going to use order. So you can see it finds everything that's relevant to order, all right? So uh, it has order in the association. So this popped up, but order, order date, instructions, number, and value. So very powerful and useful feature under the diagram tab within the browser. But primarily you're going to be dancing between the browser and resources. So let me, I'm going to now go to and wrap up my common layout, not the default layout. So what Sparks is doing right now is it's loading my common layout. And so you can see over on the right, upper right, I like to keep browser. So I've got browser, context, diagram, and resources. And sometimes when you, let me close all except getting started. No, let me close everything, right? So we're gonna close everything but you're gonna be dancing between project and resources quite a bit, mostly your project browser. And then later on, we'll get into inspector in a separate session that's gonna talk about the elements, the things that you have going on within your project, your project browser. Thanks very much for watching. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.